Well, good afternoon, everyone, and we hope your Monday is off to a great start. Thanks for watching THV 11 News at noon. I'm Amanda Yeager. Well, let's start our noon hour with a first look at your weather forecast. We have meteorologist Nathan Scott joining us. Good afternoon, Nathan. Beautiful weather out there today. Good afternoon, Amanda. Yeah, a magnificent Monday is in store. We've got lots of sunshine, some high clouds drifting their way through, but the temperatures, they're off to the races. We're about 7 degrees warmer than this time yesterday in Little Rock, 9 degrees warmer in Russellville, 7 degrees warmer for you folks in Monticello and you see on visible satellite those high clouds moving their way in here from the west, but the temperatures have already climbed up into the mid to upper 70s across the region. So guess what? We're going to be into the low 80s going through the course of the afternoon. However, this is going to be the nicest day out of the next several with all the sunshine, the trees, the grass, the weeds. Well, you can see right there the pollen certainly on the high side for trees, grass and weeds are on the low end, but I think changes will be happening as the chance of rain goes up and this is going to be some beneficial rain right now. It looks like the wettest day I think will be on Thursday. I'll let you know who could see the most amount of rainfall, how much rain I'm expecting and if there's the potential of any severe weather coming up. The one dose Johnson and Johnson coronavirus vaccine will be back in circulation following a nine day pause. The pause was out of an abundance of caution after a small percentage of patients developed rare blood clots. However, federal regulators now say the vaccine is safe to use. An updated fact sheet will now be distributed to health care providers to warn patients of the risk of developing those rare blood clots. Thousands of Arkansans received their COVID-19 vaccine this weekend, and as we start a new week, state health officials are calling on people to make their appointments and get their shot. About 250 new cases of COVID-19 reported this weekend, and around 25,000 vaccine doses were administered. Just more than 9,000 of those doses reported yesterday. That is significantly higher than the 5,900 doses reported last Sunday. In total, 1.6 million vaccinations have been given in the state. That's 66% of our total supply. 29% of our Kansans are now fully vaccinated, 13% partially vaccinated, while 57% have not gotten a vaccine. And the state is calling on those people, that 57%, to please get their shot. The governor says inventory of the vaccine is building up in the state because there aren't enough people signing up to receive doses. Something that could help, Arkansans should be able to start getting single dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine again tomorrow. That's according to state epidemiologist Dr. Jennifer Dillahay. The CDC and FDA ended that temporary pause Friday, as we mentioned, after a panel of doctors ruled the benefits do outweigh the risk of that rare blood clotting problem. Some cities and states are finding it harder and harder to administer coronavirus vaccines as the number of people who want to get vaccinated can do so, leaving only those who are reluctant to get the shots. Natalie Brand has more details from the White House. Vaccine hesitancy is becoming the latest coronavirus challenge as supply is outpacing demand in some communities. We don't need to have every American vaccinated, but we do need to have most. And I hope uh, I hope most Americans decide this is really a safe and effective vaccine that is good for them and it's good for their families. A new CBS News poll shows more than one in five Americans or around 22 percent say they will not get the vaccine. Another 18 percent are still unsure. About half of Republicans surveyed say they are either unsure or will not get the shot. I encourage people to talk to their doctors, talk to people you trust, talk to your pharmacists. Don't listen to politicians, don't listen to senators, don't listen to me. Talk to the people in your life who you trust. Overall, the majority of Americans say they will get vaccinated or have already received at least one dose. Doctors say it's important not to skip the second dose of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. It is critical that everybody get their second shot because uh, that's the only way we know that it's going to really protect you for any extended period of time. More states are expected to resume using the one shot Johnson and Johnson vaccine this week, but with added warnings after rare cases of blood clots. The CDC is also expected to announce new guidance in the coming days about wearing masks outdoors. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. One European Union official said Sunday that they expect fully vaccinated Americans will be allowed to travel to Europe again beginning at some point this summer. The EU has been closed for non-essential travel to Europe for Americans for more than a year.
Well, now we want to shift to the Arkansas State Capitol, where lawmakers are scheduled to debate a proposal that would cut one day off the state's early voting period. The bill, which would end early voting the Saturday before Election Day, as opposed to the Monday before, has already passed in the Senate. If passed in the House today, it would go to the governor's desk, where he will decide on whether or not to sign it into law. Supporters say it will give election officials a break between early voting and Election Day. Meanwhile, opponents of this and other voter bills moving through the legislature were at the state capitol Sunday to protest the proposed changes. State Senator Joyce Elliott was among the speakers yesterday who criticized the legislation as suppressing the votes of minorities across Arkansas. So I want you to know the legislators who are fighting for you have done everything they can do. We fought against every one of these bills. We gave a platform to say, how can we come together? And everybody said no. Our voting rights need to be protected. Again, it means nothing if we don't stand up for it. Call your U.S. senators, call your U.S. representatives. Along with the early voting bill, the group also spoke against Senate Bill 12. If passed, the proposal would give officials the power to change election procedures in the event of state declared emergencies. Well, new information this afternoon, police in Little Rock identify a man who was killed in a shooting at a park Sunday. Officials say Devontae Allen was shot during a drive by at Cheatham Park on East 6th Street, along with three other people. Allen died from his injuries as a result. The other three victims were taken to a local hospital to be treated for their injuries. No arrests have been made, but police are still investigating. Pine Bluff police are investigating after two people were found dead in their camper after it caught fire. The Pine Bluff Fire Department tells us it happened on Saturday morning on Good Faith Road. When firefighters were able to control the flames, that's when they entered the camper and found the bodies. Investigators also say they were able to rescue another person that was trapped in a shop building nearby. The investigation is ongoing. Officials in Yale County are investigating a plane crash that left no survivors. Around 5 Friday evening, a single engine plane disappeared from radar screens. At 11 Saturday morning, they found the plane in what they called a mountainous and dense part of western Yale County. The victims' names are not being released until the families are all notified. Students at the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville came together to show support to sexual assault survivors. There's been a record number of reported sexual assault cases on the U of A campus this year, and those who organized the demonstration say they're disappointed with the way the university has handled the allegations. And because of that, they say things are getting worse. Student leaders say they wanted that demonstration to get the attention of administration. I want them to listen and learn. Right at this point, you can't take back your words or your actions, but I want them to see that what they're doing is actually really hurtful and to kind of move forward with this and be more inclusive and understanding and caring with just basic empathy in the future when these things happen. The university released a statement on the rally saying it's proud of the students for organizing the protest as part of Sexual Assault Awareness Month. The family of a North Carolina man killed by sheriff's deputies serving a warrant last week will see the body cam video of that shooting today. There have been growing calls to release this video, which in North Carolina requires the decision of a judge. CBS's Manuel Bajorquez reports from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. I never expected this to happen so close to home. For Andrew Brown Jr.'s family, his death is yet another tragic shooting at the hands of law enforcement. And now I got to live every day, my newborn, without even getting a chance to meet him at all. Last Wednesday, Pasquotank County Sheriff's deputies were serving search and arrest warrants for Brown for felony drug offenses when witnesses say he tried to leave in his vehicle. That's apparently when deputies opened fire. Scanner audio indicates that Brown was shot in the back. Special advice, Ian Nelson's got one male, 42 years of age, gunshot to the back. Seven deputies involved have been put on paid administrative leave. Brown's death, one day after Derek Chauvin was found guilty of murdering George Floyd, sparked protests throughout the city, with calls for the release of body camera video to the public. County Sheriff Tommy Wooten says the tapes should be shown to the public if it won't hinder the state's investigation. Once I get that confirmation, 
Our county will file a motion in court to have the footage released. In North Carolina, a state law signed in 2016 requires a judge to sign off on its release, a law the city's mayor wants changed. This doesn't make sense. We have to wait forever to get the body cam. Attorney Ben Crump represents the Brown family. Why have the taxpayers have to pay for body cam video on the police if when a crucial situation happens, they won't show it to the public? Technically, anyone can make a formal request for the release of the video, but the judge then has full discretion on whether to do that. Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News, Elizabeth City, North Carolina. A baseball stadium suite, weddings, and even medical services can now all be paid for with Bitcoin. How cryptocurrency is going more mainstream. And Dash RV 11 camera on top of Simmons Bank building showing lots of blue sky with some high clouds. This could be the pick day out of the next several though because changes will be taking place. I'll have more on that forecast which does include rain coming up.